What I enjoy about healthcare is, is that you are in this really privileged uh, position. Um, you know, again, people are, people are ill, they're vulnerable, uh, and they will tell things to you that they wouldn't tell otherwise their kind of closest friends and family. Uh, but they, you know, they trust you at that point in time. Hi, my name's Will, I'm 26. I'm just finishing my second year here at Warwick Medical School. Uh, before I came here, I was a paramedic. I studied at the University of Greenwich Medway campus and did a BSc paramedic science. I did an access course at Solihull College. Uh, it was an access to science course. I ended up getting a uh, distinction overall on that course and that allowed me to go on and do paramedic science as a degree. Uh, so I dropped out of my A-levels uh, in the first year of my A-levels. I didn't really know what I wanted to do and without knowing what I wanted to do it was difficult to kind of whip up the enthusiasm, the motivation to, to do any work. Um, once I had actually a goal in mind uh, to go and do the paramedic science, uh, the motivation was there. The one year course rather than A-levels in two years, I was going to say it's maybe more intense than A-levels but I don't know because I didn't do them. Have you found time to work as a paramedic while at medical school? Uh, so I have actually found some time to, to carry on working as a paramedic. Um, there, there was less time in year one, uh, it was quite intense, quite full on, but I did still work in year one as well and into year two uh, I've continued to work. Uh, I guess it's pretty personal and kind of down to you how much time you have to work. Uh, if, you're, if you feel like you're doing alright on the course, um, you could probably work a bit more. Uh, I certainly wouldn't rely on it on doing too much work, um, just to make sure the course is obviously the highest priority, but there is, there is definitely time, uh, weekends, that kind of thing. Uh, so on the course here I've been doing quite a lot of event work, uh, which involves kind of football games, uh, rugby games, horse racing, um, festivals, concert work, that kind of thing. So I haven't actually had, been able to do any frontline shifts. Um, it's difficult to kind of keep a bank, bank contract because they want a bit of a, a commitment. Uh, but the event work is quite useful because you can just do it if and when you've got the time and when you're feeling, you can, you can deal with it in your studies. Uh, but I think at least in, in first year, you can probably do a couple of shifts, a couple of days uh, a month. Uh, and you know, more, more than that in second year. Um, you can do maybe, maybe two, two, three, four even in a, in a month. You can just take your revision along and just work while you're there if you have a quiet few minutes. Having worked before and had, a, had an income from that, one of the things when I came to medical school that I was keen to, to not lose was actually you know, being able to go out and have a nice meal or, or go away on a, on a holiday now and then, and not lose a lot of time. So yeah, I think it's enough to, to keep me in a, in a nice lifestyle. Why did you leave your career as a paramedic to become a doctor? Yeah, that's a fair question. No, I don't really have a great answer for that. Sorry, uh, I should probably know, like being here. I am putting you on the spot. No, it's cool. Um, it wasn't an easy decision to come, uh, stop being a paramedic and come and do medicine. Uh, it was something I kind of looked at each step along the way, because uh, I, I enjoyed my job, um, and the pay was, was adequate. Um, but you know, it was a fulfilling job. Um, so e each kind of step along the way, I thought, well, I'll, I'll put an application in, I'll see how that goes. Uh, I had an interview, I thought, well, I'll go to the interview, I'll see how that goes. I had an offer. So I thought, well, you know, if nothing else, it's, it's a really good CPD course for one year, um, maybe an expensive one, but um, if after that year I want to, wants to go back and, and uh, carry on being a paramedic again, I'd be a better paramedic for that year spent learning. Uh, so that's kind of how I approached it. I always wanted to, to do a little bit more than what I could do as a paramedic. Uh, so one example of where I felt my scope of practice was a little bit limited uh, as a paramedic. Uh, I went to a patient who uh, was symptomatic, uh, very, very slow heart rate, um, we'd given the usual kind of atropine for that and it wasn't helping um, and kind of the next step in that algorithm was going to be external pacing. Uh, I'd been on a course previously, an ALS course, uh, and I'd been trained, I was you know, qualified to do this pacing, but the trust, it wasn't part of my scope of practice in that trust. Um, so I did feel a little bit limited there. I ended up doing it uh, and it was beneficial for the patient, um, but you know, I don't know how well I'd have been supported by the trust um, if something had gone wrong. So uh, kind of going forwards, I'd like to, yeah, it made me think that I wanted to actually have the support and freedom to, to broaden my scope of practice. So I think what I've enjoyed most about coming to uh, medical school is understanding the, the anatomy and physiology and the reasoning behind why I was doing a lot of the things that I was doing. Um, I, mean, I did know before, roughly, uh, but it's more in depth and it kind of linking everything together that I found really, really enjoyable. You get uh, kind of on clinical placements quite early um, even though first year was pretty intense in the number of lectures, um, you were still out on placement, still seeing patients, um, which I think I'd, if, I, if it was purely just classroom lecture based for the entire year um, or even two years, um, I'd, I'd, I'd have definitely struggled. It would have put me off coming here. Um, I think, yeah, I just found that quite boring. Do you feel that paramedic science was a useful pre-medicine degree? Uh, so coming into medicine, doing my degree in paramedic science, I think was actually really useful. 
Uh, it's probably one of the best degrees you could do to come into medicine. Uh, the number of places I could go to study medicine was fairly limited, not having A-levels and having a paramedic science degree. Some places didn't count it as a, a science degree, uh, despite it being in the name paramedic science. It just wasn't on their approved list. Um, but no, it's been really useful um, beyond the obvious kind of practical skills. So, you know, you'd expect I'd be able to do a, a respiratory exam or take a history from a patient coming into this. Um, it, it's actually been useful pharmacology-wise, uh, clinical reasoning-wise, and um, kind of ongoing management-wise. Uh, so yeah, it has been really useful. Do you recommend paramedic science as a stopgap degree for those wanting to study medicine afterwards? Uh, so paramedic science itself, uh, whilst it is a good, um, you know, a really good degree to do prior to to medicine, uh, I'm not sure I'd recommend it with to, to do with the, the express intent of leaving immediately to go and do medicine. The, the benefit of, of doing the paramedic science degree that I found was actually once I'd finished the degree I went and then worked for two years as a paramedic. Um, so the benefit of, of doing the paramedic degree was actually going and working for two years for a trust uh, in the NHS rather than just finishing the degree and coming straight here. Um, I think actually the time spent working autonomously treating these patients and building up my own confidence and my own clinical skills is what's uh, stood me in the most kind of has, has been most useful to me coming here. What's the most important lesson you took away from being a paramedic? Uh, so as a paramedic, you see people at the worst point often in their lives, um, and so you need a certain amount of emotional maturity and emotional intelligence in, in dealing with that. Um, and I think it's important to remember that what you say at those times and how you say it will stick with these people for a long time. I think that's pretty transferable to, to medicine. Do you think your past experience has affected in any way your future career plans? Yeah, so I think in, in future I haven't settled on a specialty, but at the moment I'm thinking um, going down the ACCS pathway um, and then kind of seeing where to go from there really. Um, I'm quite interested in cardiology, quite interested in emergency, quite interested in anaesthetics, uh, intensive care, so possibly one of those. So yeah, I like the idea of the ACCS pathway, uh, just because it gives you a flavour of, of lots of different specialties that I'd be interested in. Um, so you kind of rotate around the different specialties, uh, and even if I ended up doing something completely different, I don't think I will. I still think the time in those specialties will actually be really useful. Do you notice a difference between yourself and your colleagues who come from different backgrounds? So yeah, coming, coming from the paramedic background, I think I have a much easier time with clinical skills. Uh, I have a much easier time with yeah, patient assessments, um, just chatting to patients, taking a history from them, and, and speaking to them on a perhaps a less, I can say less professional level, but that probably doesn't sound great, formal. You know, they have a lot of people coming over and, and you know, being very official at the bedside, and, which is important, which is good, but I think it's also good to have a, a more personal uh, and personable approach to that and a less formal style. Sometimes in, in patient um, communication can be, can be useful, building that rapport. What advice would you give to those paramedics out there thinking about switching to medicine? Um, so in, in terms of advice for, for paramedics thinking of coming to medical school, um, I guess think really, really carefully about whether it's something you do want to do. Um, it is a lot of extra money, um, both in lost earnings and in, in you know, kind of fees paid and, and maintaining yourself here. Um, so make, make really sure it is what you want to do, whether that whether you need to, to go and, and spend time with a GP or, or time working in A&E um, to get that idea. That's kind of up to you. Um, but you know, I, I'm really glad I did it. Um, and as I say, the, the way I kind of viewed it was coming along and I treated it almost like a, a one year CPD course. Um, I think it was going to improve my practice that one year. And if I wanted to leave after that one year, uh, I honestly wouldn't have felt too bad. You know, I think I'd have been a better paramedic for it. In your time as a paramedic, obviously that's a profession really closely allied to healthcare. Did you find anything surprising or challenging when you switched to medicine? Uh, so, so far on the medical, uh, on the medicine course, um, the first year has definitely been the hardest year. Um, the second year has been relatively easy. Um, it's just kind of learning common presentations, that kind of thing, which, which hopefully I'd know anyway. Um, but first year, yeah, it, it was challenging just from the amount of information that they were giving you um, and some information that I kind of vaguely knew before, um, but solidifying that and lots of new information as well. Uh, so I think it was just, it, it was not that the concepts were difficult, it was just the, the volume of information. What extracurricular activities have you been involved in while at Warwick? Uh, so yeah, I've been involved in the societies quite a lot while I've been here at Warwick. Uh, I did the widening access to healthcare society, uh, which involved bringing in lots of uh, some school kids uh, and just kind of giving them a, a flavour of what a career in healthcare would be like. Uh, so specifically not medicine, so uh, paramedic, nursing, uh, radiographer, that kind of thing. Um, so that's been really uh, good fun and, and I feel kind of giving back a little bit with that as well. I think if I'd been in one of those um, programmes myself, 
I might not have dropped out of my A-levels when I did. Uh, you know, I just didn't know what I wanted to do, so actually having the idea of that might have been, uh, might have been good for me. Uh, I've also been involved in the Trauma and Emergency Medicine Society here, uh, which is good. Uh, we, you know, it's a lot of fun. It's nice actually being able to give a little bit back um, with my background. Uh, so I've also been part of the Wilderness Medicine Society. We recently had a trip uh, into Wales where we did a, a big mass casualty event on a beach, uh, which was great fun. I helped organising that. Uh, I think it was a really useful uh, thing for, for the medical students to, to go through and experience. Um, obviously it's a, a very safe environment in the hospital, um, but being able to kind of step outside that and, and see um, you know, the, the accidents as they happen and dealing with them in a kind of resource limited setting, I think is really beneficial so that they can better experience and better understand um, the patients that are coming in to their hospital. Did you feel that you had to change your approach to study when it came to doing medicine? So I, I, think, I think I did, yeah. So coming from paramedic science to, to studying medicine, it has been a, a difference in the way that I've had to learn. Uh, studying paramedic science, you know, I'd go home and, and have a, after lectures, you know, have an evening to myself, you know, I wouldn't necessarily need to study. Um, whereas medicine, especially in first year, uh, I was going home, having some food, and then studying for another two or three hours in the evening. Uh, so it's definitely having to, to change um, my patterns of working there. Uh, and try some kind of different ways of learning to keep it interesting because there is so much to learn. Um, you know, different ways of drawing pictures and um, listening to podcasts, watching videos, um, just trying, yeah, because of how much information there is, some way to keep, keep, it, keep it interesting, keep my mind active. If you could go back in time and speak to yourself at 17 years old, what would you say to your past self? Uh, so if I could go back in time and speak to 17-year-old me, um, I think I'd probably tell him to do exactly what he's doing. Yeah, I, I think I'll be a much better doctor for my time as a paramedic. Uh, I don't think I'd have got the grades at the time uh, to have gone on and done medicine then. Uh, and I think at the time it hadn't even really occurred to me that that's something that I wanted to do. That was only a very recent thing. So yeah, just carry on doing what you're doing. Uh, so thank you for watching. Hope you found it useful. If you do have any questions, uh, you're welcome to email me uh, and I'll try and get back to you. Hopefully see you here in a few years.